David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, it has been quite some time since I have done a top 10 list. At the end of each year, I like to mix things up with a few non-review videos. I recently put out my annual video showcasing my favorite items I discovered or added to my collection this year. But I thought it was about time for a proper, all-encompassing top 10 list. So, what I have for you today is my top 10 favorite pens in my collection. No restrictions or limits. Basically, if I had to sell off my entire collection and only keep 10 pens, these would be the ones I would choose. So it's not based on price or any other factor than that. This list was a little easier to compile than I thought it would be. I started off with an initial list of about 30 pens, and even though some tough decisions needed to be made, the top 10 became fairly clear to me. Uh, in the end, there was something a bit surprising about the list, something that I really hadn't intended to happen, and I'll discuss what that was after you see what made the list. Uh, the bigger challenges were uh, determining the three honorable mentions. So what I'm going to do today is show you my 10 favorite pens in my collection, as well as those three runners-up, which pained me greatly to leave off the list. And in order to do that, please join me over here at camera two. To begin with, I had three honorable mentions. Uh, this was the most difficult part of compiling this list. Uh, there were a dozen pens I felt were worthy, but the idea was to cut this down to just the best of the best. And while these three are fantastic and bring me lots of joy, uh, these were the ones which were the closest to making the cut for the top 10. First off is a pen from Conid, and that would be the bulk filler king size. Yes, this was a very difficult exclusion. Uh, there was absolutely no reason this pen should be left off of any all-time top 10 list. Um, it is meticulously engineered and very well constructed. Um, I really like this inlaid finial design, uh, which represents the interlocking bulk filler mechanism. Uh, this Bach 380 nib that's on here is outstanding. Um, it's very wet and juicy. Uh, it's one of the biggest gushers in my collection. Um, I even like that I was able to get fig boot. Can we see that? Now you can kind of see that. Engraved on the underside of the clip. You can kind of see it through here, the cap. Um, this is a fantastic pen. And that goes to tell you what I feel about the pens that made the cut. If this one did not make it, then the others must be that much better. The second of the three honorable mentions is a pen which I featured on my recent Favorite Things video for this past year, and that would be the Rockster Daydreamer. Uh, what makes this pen so special to me is this amazing material. Uh, it's unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Um, this is what's called an amethyst dyed maple burl. Um, the process involves basically impregnating the wood cellular structure with resin to improve the stability. Um, the coloring and patterning are just mesmerizing on this pen. Now, Rockster uh, is not creating this material, but they do use it as well as other unique materials and resins in their pen. Um, I like how well this purple resin matches with the rest of this pen. You know, I've said this a few times before, but uh, whenever I try to attend a pen show, I typically carry around with me a, a pen to show to folks, something unique and interesting that has a big wow factor. Um, this is definitely a pen that I would carry around with me at a show uh, and show off to people. And I hope that I can do that again here soon. Um, I'm kind of sick of not traveling and seeing all of my pen friends in person. Okay, last honorable mention. It is a pen from an artisan whose creations just make me smile, and it is impossible not to use this pen and get a smile on your face. And that is the Night Sky Sakura from Pen 18111. Now, I own two of these pens. Uh, this one here is called the Night Sky Sakura. We can see here that we have a moon. And then I have this one here that is called the Pink Sakura. I kind of think they make for a nice, you know, brother and sister pens. Um, one of the fascinating things about Yoshi's cre creations, uh, he's the gentleman behind the brand, um, is that all of these flowers are created with a laser engraver. And basically, they get engraved into the pen. And then he painstakingly fills these holes with a resin mixture. Um, so it's almost like filling in a pothole. 
So these cherry blossoms aren't painted on. They're essentially, uh, they basically have become part of the material so that, you know, they're not going to wear off over time. Uh, and then to top it off, there is this tree branch roll stop that's wrapped around the cap. Uh, this is just an incredible package that brings me a great deal of joy whenever I get to use either of these pens. Okay, honorable mentions over, time for the top 10. Uh, and these are not in any particular order. Um, it was tough enough to come up with a list. I also didn't want the stress of ranking them. Um, I'll let you do that if you want to. If you'd like a challenging activity, feel free to let me know in the comments below how you would rank these pens. First off, we have a Visconti. Now, I considered a number of pens for this list, or a number of Viscontis. Uh, there was the Homo sapiens. This one here is the sterling silver model with the two sets of bands, which they no longer do, so I really like that it's unique. Um, I also thought about this Millionaire, which uh, basically is made from marble and has pretty much my favorite of all of my Visconti nibs is on this pen. It's just really glorious to write with. I thought about the Davina Desert Springs. Uh, this material is probably my favorite on all my Viscontis. I just think it's really, really cool. And then there was the Opera Crystal Dark Age, which is incredible in its own right. Uh, but these pens did not make the cut. What did was something of a grail pen for me for a while, and that is the Blue Ripple. Uh, there is a beautiful underlying white cracked ice resin with a mesmerizing sapphire blue sterling silver overlay, which symbolizes uh, waves created when you drop a stone into calm water. Um, it's tough to see in this light, but this overlay is a very deep sapphire blue. I almost know it. I know that it almost looks black here. I think they do have a black version of it as well. Um, this nib here is one of Visconti's older uh, 18 karat gold nibs, which provides uh, an excellent, excellent writing experience. Uh, I just really, really enjoyed this pen. And like I said, it was one of my grail pens for a while and I had to really work hard to get it. And so I was very happy when I was able to finally get it for a price that, uh, that was uh, acceptable to me. On to pen number two, and it's a pen from Omas. Um, I considered the Ojiva Cocktail Blue Angel. Um, it has one of my favorite nibs in my collection. Um, but while the material is nice, you know, I can't describe the looks as spectacular. But what material I can describe as spectacular is a pen which did make the list. And that is the Omas My Lord in the Arco Celluloid. Um, I can't say enough good things about this material. I just love it. Now, OMAS is actually an acronym. It stands for Officina Mechanica Armando Simoni. Uh, Armando was the man who founded the company back in 1925. Um, I can't get enough of this Arco celluloid. I just love the way the light reflects off of it. Um, and the uh, you can really see here in the middle the layers of the material as well. Um, no two Arco pens look the same. They all have their own personality. Um, this was really a grail pen of mine for a while. Um, not this specific pen, but any Omas Arco model. Um, I literally searched for a couple of years uh, for one that I could afford. Um, I had all of these Google alerts set up and searched eBay a couple of times a week looking for one. And when I finally came across one for an acceptable price, I jumped at it. Um, and when you finally ex uh, finally get one of those grail pens, uh, you know, that pen that you've been obsessing over for several years, it just really makes the acquisition all that more special. Uh, this is a pen that I will never sell, uh, mainly because I know how much time and effort went into getting my hands on it. Um, also, I've had the nib tuned by Mike Matsuyama, and it writes like a dream. Next up is a pen from Pilot. I considered the 823. Um, this is one of the best pens you could buy for under $300. Um, I personally care for this amber more than the grayer smoke model. Um, I also thought about the 845. Um, this is very close to a perfect pen for me. I just love the size. Um, it looks really classy and the nib is basically flawless. Um, in fact, I did a video a while back about my top 10 nibs in my collection and this one came in at number four. But there was another pilot pen which came in at number two on that list and that 
is the Pilot Custom Arushi. Um, this pen is a beast, but it has one of the softest, most pleasant nibs that you'll ever use. Um, it's one of those nibs where when you give it to someone to write with for the very first time, um, you look forward to seeing their reaction, and there will be a reaction. Um, typically, it's something like, whoa, or wow. Um, I'm really fond of oversized pens, and this one feels great in my hand. This is an Arushi lacquered ebonite pen, and I will say a, a minor downside of this pen is that at a distance, the black Arushi doesn't look that much different than the resin used on other Pilot pen models. Um, but when you look closely, you can clearly see the brush strokes used to apply the Arushi. Um, if this was a top five list, this pen would make the cut. That tells you how much I care for it. Okay, on to pen number four. This one is from Nakaya. Um, I thought about the Decapod Twist. Uh, this was my first Nakaya, and I'm very fond of this pen. Um, if I ordered this pen again, I would probably get it without the clip. Um, at the time, I really wasn't into clipless pens, but I've learned to appreciate that some pens look great with clips, but there are others which even look better without clips. Um, and for me, this is one of those pens. So that leaves the other Nakaya in my collection, which is the Dorsal Fin 2. Um, I find the looks of this pen to be stunning. Um, I love the Akatamanuri Urushi treatment, um, and I love the dual fins. The original dorsal fin model only has a fin on the cap, uh, and then this one has two fins. Now, there is a bit of controversy surrounding these fins. Um, it's always been said that these fins are created by building up the Arushi layer upon layer, um, but there are some folks out there who have a suspicion that the underlying ebonite is carved with the fins and the Arushi is just applied on top of that. The thing is, the only way to really tell this is to cut the pen in half, but no one is out there uh, really willing to ruin their pen in order to settle, settle the question. Um, I guess maybe you could x-ray it and find out. But you know what? Either way, I really don't care. No matter how it was created, it's one of my favorite designs for a fountain pen in my collection, and I just love it. There is no other pen that I own that looks anything like this, and like I said, I just love it. Um, while they are in production, the wait for these pens can be a bit long. When I ordered this pen, I was told that the wait would be over a year, but then it showed up in about four months later. So if you order one, be prepared for a long wait, and if it shows up early, then it's a nice surprise. Pen number five, and this is a beauty from Sailor. Um, I have a number of sailors I hold in very high regard. Um, I own a number of pens with the Sailor King of Pen nib, and each has its own personality. The differences are very slight, but once you own them and spend time with them, um, you know, it's like being able to tell identical twins apart. For strangers, it's tough to tell them apart, but if you're good friends with twins, then you uh, learn what makes them different. Um, I considered this King of Pen Ebonite, which has a very sleek look. Um, and then there was the King of Pen in Royal Tangerine. I just love this vibrant orange, um, and as well as the King of Pen sized nib. But the King of Pen nib that I care for the most on one of my sailor pens can be found on this King of Pen Pro Gear Sky. Um, I just love the shade of this transparent blue. Um, this was a limited edition. Um, I had eyed it for a while, but really drug my feet on picking one up, and I thought that they were no longer available. Uh, but then I was on a trip to New York City for my Neil deGrasse Tyson interview, and right before I went to the museum for the interview, I took a trip to the Fountain Pen Hospital in Lower Manhattan. Um, if you are ever in the city, it is well worth a visit. I was looking around and lo and behold, uh, they had one of these pens left. It was the very last one they had in stock and it was a medium nib, my preferred nib size. So I just had to pick this up. So this pen has a lot of good memories. Um, it reminds me of one of the best brick and mortar pen stores in the US. And it reminds me about an interview I did uh, about two hours after buying this pen. And on top of that, as I mentioned, it's one of my favorite nibs in my collection. So how could I possibly leave it off this list? 
Now, I said the Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear Sky had my favorite King of Pen nib on a Sailor pen, but I have two other pens in my collection which utilize the very same nib. And those are the legendary classic pen LB5s. Um, I am fortunate enough to own two. This deep blue here is called Tensui, and this brown model is called Kuseki. Um, but I really can't have two of the same pen on this list, so I had to make a choice. Okay, of this, which would you choose if you had to choose between them? Maybe let me know in the comments below. Um, we have the Tensui, which looks fantastic, but the dark blue really doesn't show off the diffusion bonded acrylic used to make this pen as much as the Kuseki does. Um, while I typically prefer silver colored trim on my pens, I do feel the gold matches well with this vibrant brown. So if I have to pick only one of these, then I am picking the Kuseki. Um, this pen was a collaboration between Classic Pens and Sailor. So essentially this is a slightly larger King of Pen. Um, you could see here on the band, it actually says Sailor um, right there on the band. And it doesn't have any uh, Classic Pen branding at all on this pen. Um, this was one of the few pens in my collection um, I could actually sell for a profit. Um, there were seven different colors and only 50 of each color was made. Um, they have long since been sold out. Uh, every so often one will come up on the secondary market. Uh, now, I don't know if they got the price for it or not, but there was one I saw the other day listed for $5,500. Um, I actually checked yesterday, and there is one currently up on eBay where someone is asking over $12,000. Now, I think that's very excessive, and they probably won't get that. Um, these pens originally sold for around $1,200, which is very expensive to begin with. While most high-end pens retain a decent amount of their value, um, it's nice to see one go up in value. Speaking of value, it wasn't my intention to talk about the cost of any of these pens, but I will say that this next pen is the most expensive pen in my collection. It was far more than I ever thought I would spend on a pen, and it is a Mont Blanc. Now, I considered the 149, for this list, this is a classic and a pen well worthy of a flagship moniker. However, I have a Mont Blanc that I care for even more, and that is the Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, I am a huge film buff, and Hitchcock is one of my favorite directors. Um, I have watched and studied literally all of his films, even the silent ones that are really hard to find. Uh, Mont Blanc came out with this limited edition model a while back. Um, basically before I became interested in fountain pens, they had long been sold out. And I won't retell the story as to how I ended up with this pen. For that, you could check out the full review of this pen. Um, but there are so many elements of this pen I feel they got right. Um, there are so many references to his films. Uh, there is the engraved resin on the barrel and the cap that are inspired by Vertigo. Uh, then there is the knife clip in a nod to Psycho. Um, I even like the hash marks here on the piston knob. There is one hash mark for each of the films he directed. Uh, and then the nib is really, really cool as well with Hitchcock's famous portrait. You know, my only complaint about this pen is that I wish it were a little bit larger. Um, not a lot, but just a little bit. Um, but this pen is something that I have not regretted purchasing one bit. Three more pens to go. Um, next up is one of the largest pens in my collection. This thing is huge. It also happens to have my all-time favorite nib design. And I believe it might have been my first Arushi pen. I'm not sure. Uh, it might have been. If it wasn't, it was very close to it. But that pen is the Danny Trio Genkai. Now, the full name of this pen is the Danny Trio Tamanuri on Shu on Genkai. Uh, and the name of the company is Danny Trio, not Danny Trejo, the actor. I think uh, if Danny Trejo, the actor, designed a fountain pen, it would end up looking a lot like the Montegrappa Chaos with a machete as a clip rather than a sword. Uh, but in regard to this pen, I really like this Tamanuri finish. Um, I really also like the artisan signature on the bottom of this pen. I just think that adds a real personal touch here. It reminds me that this pen wasn't just made on an assembly line uh, or by machine, that a craftsman spent many hours making this pen. 
Um, this is a really large pen. And then on top of that, take a look at this nib. Um, it's huge, which is size appropriate for this pen, but I love the intricate nib design. Um, Denny Trio has another stamping on some of their other nibs, which is a fireball. I really like that stamping as well. If I ever pick up another Denny Trio, um, I would like for it to have that fireball nib. Um, this medium nib is outstanding. It's one of the wettest nibs in my collection. Uh, it lays down a great deal of ink, but it does it in a controlled manner. And while this is size prohibitive uh, in making this an everyday carry pen, um, I still really enjoy this pen whenever I use it. Penultimate pen. And this one is from Leonardo. Um, I have a number of Leonardo's which I care for a great deal. Um, this one here is a Memento Zero Grande out of Jonathan Brooks Primary Manipulation Resin. Um, I really love the size of this pen. Um, this low profile ebonite feed is really nice. I like that design as well. Um, you know, I also thought about the Pura. I really, really love this blue. The translucent blue is just really, really sharp. You know, but then I cared for this frosted version even more. But there was one clear choice for a Leonardo, and I admit that I am a bit biased because it is the pen I released earlier the year, this year, and that is the Momento Zero Fig Boot on pens. Um, I was thrilled with how this pen turned out. Um, this custom Jonathan Brooks resin is amazing. Now, my inspiration was this Earth Magic material that he created. Um, and so our goal here was to create Earth Magic uh, kind of 2.0 with uh, a little bit more of turquoise and less of, the, uh, of less of the copper so that we could have it a little bit more of a consistent look because on some of the uh, pens with the copper in this uh, ratio, it turned out more copper than turquoise. So I really wanted it to have a, uh, a turquoise feel to it. The Momento Zero is just a solid pen. Um, I have one of the gold nibs on this version here and it writes fantastic. Um, it was a lot of fun seeing everyone's social media posts uh, re being really excited to receive their pens. And with the success of this pen, it led to the release of this pen right here. Uh, that I just have to take a second to plug. Uh, this is the Carolina Midnight. This is another partnership between myself, Jonathan Brooks, and Leonardo. Um, this dark blue has a really nice, subtle pearlescence and depth. Um, it's not in your face wow like the turquoise, but in my opinion, it is stu still cool nonetheless. Um, if you're watching this video close to when I uh, posted it, you might still be able to purchase one of these models, which will be on sale at my site, figboot.com. The sale is on December 4th and 5th, and details can be sound found on my site. Okay, plug done. Let's move on to the final pen in this countdown. While I didn't rank the pens in this top 10, this last pen very well might be my favorite pen in all of my collection. Um, it was a pen I wanted for a while and wondered if it lived up to the hype. And after I purchased it, I can confirm that it does indeed live up to all of the hype. And that would be the Namiki Emperor. Like the Danny Trio, this is an extremely large pen. Um, I was on a flight a couple of years ago writing some letters with this pen, and I could tell that the person sitting next to me was uh, looking at me wondering, you know, like, what on earth is he writing with a baseball bat? Um, while I love the looks of this Ebonite and Arushi pen, the crowning glory is this oversized number 50 nib. Um, it's tough to see here, but I really like that Pilot stamps their nibs with the production month and year. Uh, this nib here was produced in January of 2019. Uh, the incredible thing about this comically large nib is that when you write with it, it really feels like a standard number six or number eight nib. It doesn't feel too soft or too bouncy or have too much flex. Uh, it is basically perfect and rightfully earns its place as the emperor.
Um, one of these days, I might get one of the uh, Namiki Yukari models, uh, which is similar in design, but a bit smaller. Uh, now that pen has Namiki's number 20 nib, which is the only one of Namiki's pilot nibs I don't own. Um, and while I don't consider myself to be a completist when it comes to my collection, but having at least one of every nib uh, uh, that they offer would be kind of cool. Okay. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the top 10 pens in my collection. My goal for this upcoming year is to discover a pen that would supplant one of the pens currently on the list. That would be a fun discovery. Now, I mentioned there was something which surprised me about this list, and it was something I did not intend to happen, and that was that this list was comprised of pens from 10 different manufacturers. It, it just literally looked out that way, which I think is kind of nice. Now, Technically, Namiki and Pilot are the same company, but I'll let that slide. Um, I have full reviews for eight of these 10 pens on my channel right now. The two that I haven't reviewed yet are the, uh, the Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear Sky and the Visconti Blue Ripple. Um, these are both limited edition pens which have long since been sold out. Um, for the most part, I like to review pens which are still available to purchase, but who knows, I might get around to reviewing these two in the future. Um, also, late last year, I posted a video on my top 10 nibs, and six of these 10 pens made that list as well. And I did rank that top 10 list, so I'll let you watch that video to see which nib came out on top if you haven't already seen that one. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.